Welcome to another episode of In Moments Like These with David Graham. David is a speaker, author, businessman, former pastor, and founding director of Youth of a Mission, Montana. We believe that God is at work, constantly tugging at our hearts, working in and through relationship around us. Join us as we dive into a new devotional, as David shares a lifetime of personal moments and hopes to inspire you to see God the Father at work in your own moments. Thank you for joining us on today's episode of In Moments Like These. As Kathy and I sat together in our local Kalispell, Montana movie theater, fixing our eyes on the huge movie screen in front of us, we couldn't help but wipe at the tears that during certain scenes would suddenly drip down our cheeks. From the movie's beginning to its end, we couldn't help but reflect back to the time and the place that our kingdom journey started, the time and the place when Jesus, by the power of the Holy Spirit, completely shook up our personal world with his overwhelming love and leadership. And we weren't alone in that experience. There were thousands upon thousands of others that had been, and many more that would be, transformed by a mighty move of God. The time was 1969. The place was Orange County, California. You may have guessed by now that the movie Kathy and I were watching was the newly released film called The Jesus Revolution. You may have seen it. It's the true story of an amazing revival which ultimately became the largest move of God in American history. It all started in a tiny church in the city of Costa Mesa, California, during the late 1960s, and would eventually spread throughout North America, Central America, and Europe before subsiding in the late 1980s. And Kathy and I were so very blessed to be a part of and play a part in those early beginnings of what was called the Jesus Movement. I'll share a bit of our personal story in a minute, but first I want to begin with a short look at history, Bible history first, to remind us of how many times when God revealed himself and powerfully moved in the hearts of his people through his gift of a revival. You may not have thought of these historical events as revivals before, but often described as awakenings, that's exactly what they were, spirit-led awakenings. Here's a short list of revivals that took place during the Old Testament era. There was a revival under Moses after crossing the Red Sea, a revival under Joshua after crossing the River Jordan. There were revivals in the book of Judges under Samuel, King Asa, Elijah, King Jehoshaphat, at Nineveh under Jonah, under King Hezekiah and King Josiah, under Zerubbabel, Haggai, Zechariah, Ezra, and Nehemiah. But in all human history, there never was before and has never since been a revival like the one that was ignited in 26 AD and recorded in the New Testament. The great awakening of all time opened with a voice of one crying in the wilderness, John the Baptist, who had the great honor of introducing mankind to the saving Lamb of God, the very Son of God. And the original Jesus movement broke out when all of a sudden heavenly light erupted in the darkness and a dying world was mightily awakened. And during the last supper on the night before Jesus was crucified, he made a promise to his disciples. He promised them that the awakening revival was far from over. He promised them that the Holy Spirit, sent by his Father, would be taking over on his behalf. The first Jesus movement would be spreading even further, like a wildfire, under the power of the Holy Spirit. His promise came to pass starting 50 days after his resurrection, 10 days after he ascended into heaven. Acts chapter 2, verses 1 through 5 says this, On the day of Pentecost, all the believers were meeting together in one place. Suddenly, there was a sound from heaven like the roaring of a mighty windstorm, and it filled the house where they were sitting. Then, 
what looked like flames or tongues of fire appeared and settled on each of them. And everyone present was filled with the Holy Spirit and began speaking in other languages as the Holy Spirit gave them this ability. There were devout Jews from every nation living in Jerusalem for the festival of Pentecost. When they heard the loud noise, everyone came running. I love that. They came running. Revivals can make that happen. And when these Jewish foreigners got there, they heard Peter preach, quoting centuries-old scriptures, like the verse from Joel chapter 2, where the prophet declares, In the last days, God says, I will pour out my Spirit upon all people. And how did the foreigners respond to Peter? Acts chapter 2 verse 41 says, Those who believed what Peter said were baptized and added to the church that day about 3,000 in all. Wow. But did you catch what's happening here? These were devout Jews from every nation, not a few nations, who had come to Jerusalem for the pilgrim festival of Pentecost. And thousands of these new baptized believers would be leaving the next day and heading for their nations. Now the Jesus movement is spreading everywhere, and it would keep on spreading by the Holy Spirit's power through the apostles. Apostle Paul would first see a revival at Antioch in 42 AD, and he would see them continue for the next 15 years during each of his three missionary journeys throughout the entire Gentile world. And it didn't stop there. Because of revivals over the centuries, the family of God today represents nearly one-third of the world's population. On that note, I'll return to the Jesus movement of the late 60s and early 70s when God's Spirit first fell upon Orange County, California. It started under the leadership of Pastor Chuck Smith in a small non-denominational congregation of about 50 people that met in a little building on Church Street in Costa Mesa. Small beginnings. But God had big plans, plans which included a host of California hippies. And when they arrived and found Jesus as their Lord and Savior, everything changed. And like the original wildfire, started by Jesus himself, this new Jesus movement began spreading all across Orange County and way beyond. One couldn't drive down a street or freeway without encountering countless bumper stickers that read, One Way, or Jesus is the Way. The popular shout-outs, the proclamations that were born in the surging revival. It was all so unusual, but so wonderful. Yes, God had plans. And those plans included the personal revival of a young married couple named David and Kathy Graham. In our very first episode, I described our own revival story during that awakening when God cleverly led us to Anaheim in Orange County City to a huge non-denominational church known as Melody Land Christian Center. I shared that when Kathy and I first walked through the doors of the giant building packed with thousands of people, we were overwhelmed with the power of God's presence. We had never experienced anything like it before. And it was there just a few weeks after our first visit that Kathy and I and a bunch of others responded to the message and went forward into a prayer room. And it was in that prayer room that the Holy Spirit, the one behind the awakening, came upon us and our lives were changed forever. A few months later, on an afternoon in the spring of 1970, I would take a 40-minute drive from our home in San Pedro to the city of Costa Mesa, a city close to Anaheim. God had been clearly speaking to me. Kathy was in agreement. And this is what I was hearing him say. David, I want you to go into the ministry, and I want you to do this right away. In response to his words to me, I had been knocking on doors. I had already spoken with got input from two local pastors. And on this day, I was hoping to speak to yet another. Father, I prayed as I drove, 
If you would just let me meet him. I'm knocking on a, another door, Father. In no time at all, I walked into the new Calvary Chapel complex located on the corner of Sunflower and Fairview. I had been on the property before, both in a Sunday morning gathering and in the big tent one night. And today I stood in the large inner courtyard that bustled with excited young people mostly. I was just about to ask someone where Pastor's office was when I saw a door open across the way and Chuck Smith began walking over to my right. I awkwardly hustled over to try to meet him, and he, very kindly, stopped for me. Then, in short, I blurted out something like this. Pastor Chuck, my name is David Graham. I'm sorry to interrupt you like this, but I drove down here today hoping to meet you. You see, I'm hearing God tell me that I'm supposed to go into the ministry, and I'm supposed to do that right away. Would you possibly have any advice for me? A word for me, maybe? I know. David is acting a bit strange here. But I was knocking on doors. I only wish I could remember exactly what he said to me that day. But in short again, his answer went something like this. I hear your heart, David. David, you just need to keep looking up and listening to him. And he will show you the way. He will. He said with that sweet Chuck Smith smile. And then he slowly turned and proceeded on his mission for the day. Thank you, Pastor Chuck. Hmm. You know, I'm thinking right now, I, I only wish I could have seen into the future because I would have also thanked him for his future gift to me. Because about a decade after our brief meeting that day, Pastor Chuck Smith and the Maranatha music team would produce, record, and launch the song I wrote called In Moments Like These, the same song that Chuck would use for the intro to his popular nationwide radio program. But those afternoon moments in the spring of 1970 were meaningful because Chuck Smith had just encouraged me with words very similar to my life verse, the scripture verse my mom wrote in my Bible when I turned 12 years old. Proverbs 3, 5, and 6. Trust in the Lord with all your heart, and don't lean on your own understanding. In all your ways acknowledge Him, and He will direct your paths. And He did direct. For it was on a morning just two weeks later, as Kathy and I sat in his office, that Pastor Ralph Wilkerson asked me to be the high school pastor of Melody Land Christian Center. And our ministry began. And our story, like the stories of many thousands of others, was born in a revival. And you know what, dear friend? Something big is happening right now. Even as Kathy and I sat in the theater a few weeks back, a major new revival was going on 24 hours a day in one of America's colleges. And at the same time, according to reports, many other revivals were and still are taking place all around the world. Our loving God is releasing His power again. I'm so excited over what He's doing and what He will be doing. Be encouraged today, dear friend. Let's you and I join together with God and all of His children to participate in perhaps one of the greatest awakenings ever, a revival that will reach millions for the glory of Jesus. Dear Holy Spirit, please move upon my dear friend, this dear one of yours, and please move upon me. Revive us to the full and let your kingdom come to the full on earth as it is in heaven. Let it be. Thank you for listening to another episode of In Moments Like These with David Graham. And we hope that this podcast and this episode can be another tool and resource to help you in this walk of faith. If this podcast has made a difference in your life, we would love to hear from you. Visit us online at inmomentslikethese.com. That's inmomentslikethese.com.